Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you saw my last video in which I terrified my granddad in a Porsche 911 GT3 Touring, you can watch that up here by clicking the top right hand side of the screen, by the way, then you will have heard me say the words that the next video is featuring a car that I've always wanted to buy. And behind me now, is that very car. You've probably already noticed it from, well, the title of the video, but the very distinct front end. It's a Maserati Gran Turismo, this being the earlier 4.2 V8 and the first of the iterations they made. And it's just an absolutely gorgeous car from whichever angle you look at it. This one supplied by a very, very generous subscriber indeed is finished in uh, fantastic specs. And it's one of the winning combinations, a grigio or a gray color with a red leather interior. Now for me, the black wheels, not what I'd have. I'd have them in silver, but all in all, a fantastic spec. And there's, to be honest, not really a bad spec for this car. Any color, any combination looks amazing because it's a Maserati Gran Turismo, one of the finest designed and finest looking cars that I can think of. Now, partly because of the way these cars look and how just unbelievably stunning they are, but mainly because of the price point that these cars in the UK at least find themselves around, it's always been a car that I've been stupendously intrigued by. Not only this, but the four door or five door saloon sister of this car, the Quattroporte. I've always been intrigued by these older, now relatively quote unquote affordable Maseratis. So the question posed then in this video is, should you go ahead and buy one of these 4.2 litre V8 Maserati Gran Turismos? They're on the market now for under 20 grand. It depends obviously on specification mileage. This one has been meticulously maintained. It's on around 90,000 miles and it would probably sit just around or under 20 grand if it was sold on the market today. So is it too good to be true? Is it actually terrible in every single way? We'll find out. We're going to take it for a good extensive drive today. And for me, this is one of those cars along with the BMW M6, the Bentley Continental GT, even Ferrari 599. One of those era of cars that I've always been intrigued by. And uh, well, I'm looking for more stuff like this to drive. So if you are out there watching and you have a car that you think I'd be interested in doing a video like this with, then do get in touch with me on my email on the screen. I'll probably be down there. Anyway, that's enough talking. I'm going to get in the car. Go for a drive now, and I'm very excited to hear this glorious, glorious engine note from the Ferrari-derived V8 up front. Let's go. Oh, that's the wrong side. <laughs> Well, here we are then in the Maserati Gran Turismo, the first time I've ever driven a Maserati, actually. Never driven a car from this brand before. And instantly what you notice being in this car is the driving position is great. Uh, I barely had to do any seat adjustment to get it right. And I feel like I'm sat in the right place, which is always a nice thing. It is a big car, this. It's almost five meters long and weighs, I think, over two tons. And you do feel that sitting in the car. The steering's actually quite heavy as well, which is, I guess, ever so slightly surprising. But as we go around a corner, yeah, it's, it feels good actually and very communicative. I can feel exactly what those tires are doing under the car, which is very nice and what you would expect from Maserati. One thing I am keen to try is these big flappy paddles to change gear. Now, I'm going to pop it into sport mode. This has the skyhook suspension option, so that will firm it up a little bit. Throttle response is slightly more abrupt, let's say. And let's just use these paddles. I think we'll flick it across into manual there. Let's pop it down into second gear. Nice little downshift and just give it about half a squeeze. Yeah, and it accelerates nicely. There's a good amount of mid-range power. I think you really want to get around 3,000 or above in the RPMs to really experience it. And when you put your foot down, you've got a red line of around 7,500 RPM, and it does pick up pretty well. So in the UK, you can pick up 
a okay example of this car for £20,000. There are some that are cheaper, but as with everything, buy cheap, buy twice. But I think £20,000 would get you a good example that you could drive away and at least enjoy. Which, if you think about it, is quite remarkable because essentially this Maserati Gran Turismo is a supercar. Compared to modern standards, of course, it's slow. If anything, I think the 0 to 60 time is north of four and a half seconds on this thing. Top speed is struggling to get above 180 miles per hour. So, yes, by modern standards, it's quite slow. Most BMW 5 Series would beat this thing off the line. But, for all intents and purposes, this is a supercar. It's a Maserati, and the fact that you can get it for 20 grand seems like a great idea, doesn't it? But what I do like is that sound. That is something you don't get in a BMW 5 Series. A pleasant surprise, actually, is the gearbox. You hear a lot of things about these older gearboxes in, well, especially Italian cars being horrendous. And although this isn't the best, it is actually a ZF six-speed gearbox. So whilst it doesn't provide the excitement that maybe an earlier F1 or Duo Select box in the Maserati would have given you, it does actually shift quite well and importantly you can drive it in automatic and it seems to handle itself quite nicely even at slow speeds the owner actually said that he drives his car in auto most of the time and i can see why to be honest because although it's a cruiser and it's nice to do that you don't get that much out of using the paddles although they're really lovely very well made and nice to click i don't really get that much excitement from going through the gears and one really annoying thing is even in sport and manual mode if I put my foot all the way to the floor it will downshift it's not a kick down you don't click it but if I put my foot all the way down on the throttle no matter what I'm doing I'm in sixth gear and I just want to use the torque it will downshift which I find quite frustrating also you can't hit the rev limiter it will shift for you even if you're in manual mode which I think is a little bit of a shame Another thing that these unfortunately suffer with, and this one is definitely no exception, is sticky buttons. Now, unfortunately, it's the same with lots of old Maseratis, Ferraris even, the buttons and lots of the switch gear, especially on the right-hand side here with the light controls, but also down here, the buttons for the air vents and air conditioning go super, super sticky to the point where when you touch them, like I wanna go and wash my hands, it's just not a nice feeling whatsoever and that can be quite a pricey thing to fix i'm not sure the build quality was the best in this car with you know other things that you touch even the steering wheel feels quite badly worn for something of its age and i've seen the owner's spreadsheet handwritten spreadsheet of all the little bits including painting the headlight washer covers that he's done and so i know this has been meticulously looked after but still it does feel quite worn in places having said that the seats front and rear are one very comfortable feel very premium and still present beautifully after however many years this car has been around almost 15. quite interestingly this car is a true four-seater i've had a little sit in the back this afternoon and although it's not a range rover or my long wheelbase 7 series in the back i as a five foot ten man can sit there comfortably if you slouch a little bit the headroom is absolutely not a problem either and i genuinely genuinely would be quite happy to spend hours in the back there and there's two seats like that in the back so you can get four people and a big boot you can get a couple of suitcases in there this is obviously a gran turismo a gran tourer and you can totally totally use it for that it really is perfect where that does compromise slightly though and has been a little bit disappointing is in the driving experience it's certainly not as exciting as I expected. Now, as I mentioned, the gearbox doesn't really do much for me. Although it's very functional and usable, I don't really get much thrill from using it. So I'm just in drive. The throttle response is actually quite slow, even in sport mode. It's not as instantaneous as I would want, especially from a naturally aspirated engine. And although the steering feel is extremely communicative and responsive, it is heavy steering and you do feel the weight of this car and the size of it when you're trying to push on around corners a little bit and lastly the sound is a little bit of a letdown now 
The owners even modified this exhaust slightly by deleting a central resonator and putting in an X pipe, which would certainly help with the noise somewhat, but also that tone and that frequency. And unfortunately, as testament to how well it's sound insulated in here, from inside the car at least, you can't hear much. You can hear it very much so on the outside of the car, and you notice that from the looks of people as you accelerate past. But I just want a little bit more sitting in here, and it only revs up to around 7,500 RPM, and it just doesn't scream as much as I'd, I'd hoped for. I, th I guess I guess watching straight pipe videos of these cars is what that does to you, because I'm just expecting to hear something like that. It's a very well-judged sound, but it's just not wow. It's not, it's not as exciting as I was expecting, which is a little bit of a shame. And although I've previously thought and said when looking at these cars on the classifieds that the whole sticky buttons thing and the dated infotainment system just doesn't bother me at all, actually being in here, if I was to spend £20,000 on one of these, I think it would bother me, actually. I would be a bit annoyed by certainly the buttons and how cheap it all feels, but also the very, very dated infotainment system. It does bother me a little bit and I would probably want something a little bit more for my money. And this may be because I've been spoiled. I mean, I have been very spoiled over the past year, really, with some of the cars that I've been exposed to. Most recently, as you saw, with that 911 GT3. But it's not quite as fast as I want it to be. Now, I know that they did a later 4.7, which gave you about an extra 40 horsepower, which might make all the difference in the world but it's just not quite quick enough to be exciting. Let me demonstrate, let's pop it into manual again. Let's go into first gear and let's go to 60 miles an hour from 20. So first, and there's 60 miles an hour. So look, it's not slow at all, but it's not a pin you in the back of your seat fast, which when you look at this car, I get all giddy inside, but when you drive it, it doesn't quite match up, at least in my opinion. And so I'm, I'm a little bit torn really with how I feel about this car now. It's always been something I've enjoyed and loved the idea of, but now I've driven one, if I'm really honest, would I buy one of these? No, I don't think I would. So what I want to know from you guys is if you were in the position where you had 20 grand and you wanted a car like this, something that maybe it was a second or a third car, perhaps a weekend toy, where would you put your money? Because all I can seem to think of is V8 Vantage at the moment. And I know that there's a ton of other things. I mean, E63 M6, that's another one with the naturally aspirated V10. That is a direct comparison to this car. A 997 generation Porsche 911. Where would you put your money? Because I'm not sure mine would be here. I don't know. It's really, it's a tough one. And I'm, I'm actually still torn about this car and think I would need to spend a lot more time to develop a real full opinion on it. I want to give a massive shout out to the owner for letting me drive around in his gorgeous Maserati for the afternoon. It's been a real privilege actually and a very eye-opening experience and hopefully one which you guys have enjoyed watching. Now if you are in the group of 70% of my viewers that are not subscribed to the channel, do please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. I wonder if we can hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. It would be quite an achievement but you're only ever one viral video away from that. But if you could help out, you're watching right now and you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it. If you could give this video a thumbs up and hit that big red button. Do comment below as well your thoughts on the Gran Turismo. Have you driven one? Do you disagree with me? Or what would you actually spend your money on if you had this type of cash? Thanks again for watching and I will see you all very, very soon.